Becky's here, right? How come it's not broadcasting up on that? All right. Um, I'd like to call to order the Weathersfield School Board meeting for Tuesday, December 12th um, at 6.35 p.m. Um, I guess we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, in addition to the regular school board tonight, we also have our budget advisory committee I'd like to introduce to everyone. Uh, first, we have Christian Craig. Um, and we have Jessica Brown and Deb Richardson. And um, Julie Hayes is not here right now, but maybe we'll see her later. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Can we just have a quick conversation with her, too? Um, like yeah. Two minutes, maybe. Okay. Under items for discussion? Sure. Hey, where can you obtain a copy of the agenda? On the WSESU website. Okay. And then just go to, um, I think it's school boards. I'll check for you, Brendan. Hold on. We're not hearing him. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. They're not projected either. So it, it's under our SU and then school boards. And then you'll go to Weathersfield. Yeah. And then you'll scroll down and you'll be able to click on the um, link to tonight's agenda. Um, it's like three or four clicks, so it's not <laughs> intuitive. <laughs> and you really have to scroll down. Yeah. It's like it's not at the top. It's like in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We can have the water. Ah, I see it. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah, talk about that. I can inform you because I didn't put that as part of my regular report. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move on to approval of the minutes for November 14th. Um, I guess I'll take a motion to approve them and then we'll mention that change. So moved. Okay, Mark made a motion to approve them. Um, there was one correction brought to my attention um, under section eight, setting the next agenda. The next meeting is the 12th, not the 14th. So hopefully Tonight. people aren't showing up two days from now. But <laughs> I think well, I think everywhere else it was correct. They'll so be here for the ride. Should be fine. Them. Yeah. So. Okay. Good. Oh, <laughs> All right. Um, but otherwise, does anyone else have any other changes? Okay. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 And that's unanimous. Okay, next we have public participation. Is um, anyone want to, are you here to participate? Okay. Anyone online? No hands are up. Okay. All right, we'll go on to um, student presentation of learning. No, not this month. We will okay. have next month. Oh, Finn's going to get up in just a second and talk as part of my report. But we okay. will have part of the science class that will be presenting. But this month we took a break since budget's budget, the hot budget, topic. Budget. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to the administrative report. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Brian. Okay. You're going to yep. do it? Yeah. Do For some it. reason, it's not projecting up here. We're having some continued technical difficulties. So, but... We'll do. Yes, they won't see it. Will yeah, they? it's not seeing it up there. So, but they're seeing it at home. Yes. And then just go to slideshow. So I'm just trying to get everything. Going. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you can just do hit slideshow. Yeah, I can do that. Make it back there. Slideshow. There we go. Perfect. All right. So here's our lead learner report for December 12th, 2023. Just imagine a big W with Panther jumping through it. Okay. 
Not that. <laughs> All right, Finn, here's a true test. Do you remember what you said? I will help you out. All right. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yes. I have to do it. Yes. So, um, you you can just sit there if you want to, or you can go. Yep. Student board member Finnegan Kelly is up. News program. So the expanded news program we've now implemented on um, live news um in the mornings um where I. Um, and Mr. Marquez get to report on the news in the morning. Um, students, not just me, can, I think, in the leadership, um, advisory, or elective, can I participate. In. So Finn and I are starting to do, like, we're sort of co-hosting the news, the morning announcements in the morning. It's a little fun. <laughs> um, and we do the regular program that we would do, but we add a little bit more we talk about natu National Gingerbread House Day today and how it was a tradition in his home and my home and talk a little bit about that and just trying to make it a little bit more personable, um, just, you know, live in the morning with Finn and Mr. Martis. So, <laughs> so it's a fun time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, Finn. Variety show. Um, so on Thursday, the Weathersfield Variety Show is being put on in the gym and um, students can come and see their and see their peers and students can participate in it and show off their talents and um, what they can do what you, time is that going to start at that's going to start at six and it's going to end at seven but i think it's going to go a little okay. later than that are you the mc yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right toy drive and, and the weatherfield toy drive um the toy drive is something where students can bring in toys and put them in a little box out front underneath the Christmas tree. And they can, um, the toys will then be donated to people in need. Nice. And there it is. And the cookie triathlon is final. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the turkey triathlon was something that happened right before Thanksgiving break, where the leadership elective um, got together and they created games for the K-5 students to participate in. The K-5 students went around the um, area of the school and um, had little cards where uh, the person, the people who were running the stations would punch uh, the holes when they were done. And when they got three holes, they um, got a prize. They got a prize at the end. And they, they had lots of fun. I was one of the people participating in the uh, helping out. Mm -hmm. um, that, was, that was good. Yeah, no, it was an awesome event for our K through five students. And what was really nice is I, I love how our, our students are really starting to take a look at what they're doing. And after the first recess went through, they said, okay, we could make this correction and this correction to make it run a little bit smoother. Mm -hmm. So right there on the fly, they were able to make those corrections and make things happen to make it run even smoother. And they came together as a group and it's sort of like, we just gave it to them and said, this is the idea, run with it. And they literally did, which was amazing. Um, just to have them have that, for us to really be that guide on the side. Um, and allow them to really go through that process on their own. So it was great. Thanks, Finn. Great job. Thank you. All right. So Leader and me, always our focus here at school classroom, um, are continuing to work on their wigs. They have academic wigs. Some of our students also have personal wigs in their, um, in their portfolios that they're doing and then able to share that. And the portfolios are getting built each and every day as kids are completing work and they, it's something that they want to be able to share. So they're adding that into their portfolio so that they can share them at student life conferences in the spring. So PTO, I told them that they didn't have to come tonight. So they took the night off, which was amazing for them because they worked so hard. The event that they did, and I had multiple slides, but only one showing up, but make it and take it, which was not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before. What an amazing event again, as always, that they did. And every year, well, for the last two years, the two years that I've been able to see it and we've been able to have it, it's just expanded. So I thought last year was pretty phenomenal. This year was over the top, even better than last year. Um, the PTO put on several different stations where kids could make 
different items. They make up to five items and take them home with them. And then the craft fair that went along with it was so many vendors. I think we had, what, 30 vendors this year? 36 vendors this year. And it was great. The gymnasium was packed with people, and they were selling their products. Um, and it was just a fantastic event for all the students and for everybody that participated. That's okay. That's okay. I can keep talking. So I can just keep talking without the slide thing. I'm that. Um, safety drills. So we have not done our, our fire drill yet for this month, so we will do it sometime between now and next Wednesday. Um, so it's always, we always try to put a notification in the newsletter as well. So families are aware that when we're doing them or around the time, we don't directly let people know. So the state of Vermont said, don't let your staff know exactly when they are, but let them know that one's coming up. And so it's one of those things that we give parents the opportunity to talk to their students about too, because it is loud, but it's very important. And we can exit the entire school within about two minutes, two minutes and 15 seconds, I think. Um, and going to other schools, not just in RSU, but I remember one day last year I was at a high school and it was so different. Um, and not a high school around here, high school far away, um, <laughs> but just so different of how the kids came out and they didn't really know what they were doing. Um, our students and our staff know exactly what they're doing for a fire drill and are very serious about it, and which is great because it is important for that. It's not that one. It's this one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. Are you there now? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there I have it on my screen now. Okay. So our enrollment so far for this year um, is we have 245 students. Our top enrollment again for this month was actually, I thought it was eighth grade again, eighth grade is close, but our average is right around 94%. If you're looking at most of our students, um, between 95 and 93. Um, kindergarten is a little bit harder there. Kindergartners get sick more often and they stay home more often. Um, but our total was almost 94%, 93.77 for average daily attendance, which is pretty amazing so far, even with all the flu and other things that are going around. So kids want to be at school and want to be part of us. <sighs> <laughs> Still looking. Enough said. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, I do want to thank our budget advisory committee. We have three of our members here today, like Anne Marie's um, introduced and start Christian, Jessica, and Deb. Um, we did have two meetings so far. Um, we worked, hashed things out, took a look at it. Lots of questions were asked and answered. And so I just appreciate them giving up their time now for three times to be here. So we just appreciate you guys being part of the process and asking great questions. And it's nice to be able to have a team willing to take a look at the budget and help us learn a little bit more about it. And it's it's a great experience for everyone to be able to understand it. But we appreciate you guys' time and effort. So thank you very much. Okay, so generator grant. So we were looking at trying to get a generator for our school to make it um, so that we can be a safe place if there is some type of emergency, some type of natural disaster. So we put in a grant, which is a 100% matching grant. So they'll take care, well, it's zero cost to us. Um, so we looked at two different options. We looked at a diesel generator, which was a little bit cheaper, and then also a solar generator. So those did go in. The grant was put in on Friday. So thank you to BJ, who worked on that with Malia from um, the Windsor. Um, and it should be great if we get it. The town got one last year. And so we're looking at getting one too, so that we can use our facility if there is some type of emergency where we need to. So that was going on on that. Um, our choir is walking down on Friday to perform at the Scutney House. They're going to be singing to some of the residents there on Friday. So excited about that to see them be able to do that. And then also they're going to be um, working on a tree lighting. So we're pairing with the Proctor Library. And so I talked to Mark Richardson over there the other day and sort of put him on the spot and said, hey, I got this great idea. Um, I was at another town the other day and they did tree lighting and it was great. And we don't have anything like that in Weathersfield. So he had an event scheduled for the 16th, so he let us tag on to that. And so our leadership class is going to be bringing over a tree to put in front. We're trying to figure out a way that we can decorate one of the other trees over there. Um, so we called the fire department out. One of the trees that's really big, really big now, is um, way too close to power lines to get up to. So Chief Spalding said, absolutely not, um, which Good. I understand that. And so we were looking at, because the little green, I didn't realize that we had a little weather spilled green right in front of the oldest cutting store. I got a history lesson too, which was great. Um, 
And so we decided then to do it across the street with the Proctor Library. So Mr. Vila donated a tree for us. And so we're going to start a little tree lighting ceremony. So we'll have the tree lighting from 6 to 630, along with um, just some caroling. Some of our students will be over there singing and people can join us. And then from 630 to 7 is story time. And then um, some guy with a beard and a red <laughs> outfit is going to show up at 7 o'clock. So awesome. we're excited about that opportunity and for our students to be able to share in that and become more part of the town, so which is awesome. So I'm excited about that. And then Finn already mentioned the Giving Tree with her doing the toy drive to be able to give out items for um, people that are in need. So thank you for Leadership Class for doing all those things. Upcoming events, we are very busy for the next few days for six more days of school. Not that anybody's <laughs> counting, but six more days. Okay. Yeah, that's it before winter break. So we have the variety show coming up. Um, eighth grade field trip drawing. So our eighth grade who at the end of the year goes up to Burlington and rides on the Edgar Allen on the boat. I had the opportunity to go last year with the kids and they did so many things. They did miniature golf in Claremont. Then we got on the bus and went up to Edgar Allen. Then we did some rock climbing. And then we went to Colchester to go bowling and then play in the arcade. All these things in one day. It does cost a lot of money and it's free to our kids. So their kids have been out there selling raffle tickets. So the raffle drawing is on Thursday night with the um, variety show as well. So and raffle tickets still, some of you I know, bought last time. So if you haven't bought them, let us know and we'll take, um, get you taken care of with that. Um, our eighth graders are also going on a field trip to the Hartford Tech Center on the 20th. So they get that opportunity to see the Tech Center. Um, we're going to alternate each year between Hartford and Springfield Tech Center. So the kids get that opportunity to see what's going on there as well. We have our K-5 holiday sing-along on friday or on wednesday the 20th as well so parents if you would like to come and see your kids sing kindergarten through fifth grade will be performing some holiday classics and some new holiday songs that you might not have heard yet i'm um, celebrating hanukkah as well as kwanzaa as well as christmas and then um early release day on the 20th school is out from the 21st to the second we come back to school january 15th is dr martin luther king junior day so no school and on the 16th we have a staff development day for parents or not for parents, for students, <laughs> for teachers, so no students that day. No, no school for students that day. So all those things going on all the way through January. And that's it for me. And then now it's Christine's it's me. turn. Okay, and my report is linked, my full report. I'm just going to pull out a couple of highlights for you because I think they're important. Um, we, as you know, are sending a survey of, of the month out. And we're getting a fairly good response to the quick surveys. Um, in November, we asked um, which method of accessing your child's progress you prefer. And sorry, that was October. Last month, we asked um, what method are you currently using the most? And you can see by the graph, although you probably can't see it, um, the red section is 49%. That's written communication from staff. So email um, notifications or um, a lot of teachers in the SU use Class Dojo. I don't know if Weathersfield uses that at this time, which is just a yeah. instant feed through a online um, app, essentially. 24.5% uh, are um, using the PowerSchool mobile app. That's the one they use the most. And the green is PowerSchool web application, and that's a little, it's 26.5%. So. The yellow was report card, and nobody is accessing that at this time. Then we asked how often people are accessing PowerSchool to find information about their um, own children, their own child's academic progress. The little blue sliver is daily. The red is uh, 30, almost 35% is once or twice a week, which is, which is great. Um, the yellow is 26.5%, that's once a month. The green is 16.3%, and that is only during the parent-teacher conference um, times during the year. And then um, the purple was never. So we've got some work to do in terms of um, making sure all our parents are informed of how their, ch how their children are doing. There were some comments, but I can't see my notes, but I can recall from memory, some parents, there were a couple people that asked what is power school? So we know we need to do a better job at educating um, our parents, but especially our new ones. So I talked to Larry about that and he and his, uh, the tech team have put out videos in the past. So they're gonna pull those out and we're gonna get those out to the community. Once again, um, there were 
multiple comments about the use of Class Dojo, which is not at Weathersfield, but I know Heartland teachers use it and Windsor, and parents really seem to like that. And the teachers can instantly send pictures like on an app through their phone that goes out and everybody gets those um, in real time. So parents really, really liked that. Um, so we do have some work to do. Hi, did you find a fix? I think so, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just keep rolling. All right, we can, we can pivot. Um, the, the question of the month for December is really about um, community engagement because that's the goal of all of our boards to increase community engagement. And we're, we are asking if they've attended community engagement events and what kind of events they would like to participate in. So we'll get some data on what people really are excited to come out around and hopefully that will help us create events where we get more participation. Um, and that is the end for now. I know we've got budget tonight, so leaving time for Brian to get into that. And Ed Connors is here tonight um, to help us with the complicated <laughs> budgetary uh, parts. There's, there's lots of moving parts um, in the budget process, and we certainly don't have all the information that we need as of tonight. So it's a best estimate at this time. So I'm thinking BJ's going to... Oh, so. Work her magic <laughs> and get the screen on yes, so you can remote. see it. Oh, mind your way. Technology is great when it works, right? One question that I had with regards to um, Brian's thing with the, uh, the generators um, if we went with the solar option, would that be able to be hooked in with our solar panels? So then that way it kind of be like unlimited. It's, it's, I'm going to answer that question okay. because he's doing this. So, uh, yeah. Yes, it would be battery backup with the solars. They uh -huh. would tie into the solars. I think we'd have to look at our lease agreement with the solar. Uh -huh. And um, we're, it's a when we were when we were approving that, there we did tell them that we wanted to do something like this. Yeah. And so I think it should be okay as far as the contract goes because they knew that that was something we were interested in doing in the future. Yeah. Yeah, so it would be tied to our existing panel uh -huh. with battery backup. Yeah. New batteries, different batteries for the generator. Yeah. Not any existing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't think it's anything I need to do. No. It nope. might be. Okay. What is it? Did you? You're on HDMI 3. Okay. And when I went to HDMI 1, right. it just said no signal at all. So it's showing up. Yeah. Down there. So Did you I'm thinking, is this been her, Yeah, try to mirror yeah. again. I can try that. We are experiencing some technical delays. Mm, settings, there we go. Oh, no, that's not it. No, hold on, they're in here somewhere. This cast screen. No. Screen capture. Where are my screen? If we do those, we could just put it into your, you can use yours before. Yeah. Okay. Did it work? Yeah, you want to try it? Yeah. You got it? Oh. All right. You're good. It sounded good online. Just to let you guys know. Okay, good. I mean, good. So, Oh, yeah. Yay. Guess what? It's my right. computer. It is new. So, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. No worries. I will stop sharing now. Okay. Then. Okay. So, you can take over. All right. Okay. Now we're good. Hopefully. Okay. All right. Um, All right. So, we are, we are on to items for discussion. And first up is the budget. So I'm gonna hand it back to Brian to present our, um, what is it now? It's the 20, FY25 mm -hmm. budget. FY25 budget. All right, so here's the Weathersfield budget comparison. So I sent that to you guys through email and then you also have a hard copy of that. So the BAC committee and I looked over it closely. So this has all of our wishes, wants, and dreams on it. Um, and then it is up. But Ed, do you want to explain a little bit about? So our budget overall is it's up. It's up because healthcare expenses are up, 
salaries are up. Lots. You've added some positions. We've added some positions in there because we did add a full-time world language teacher in the position. We also added a health teacher, teacher. in the position. Um, there's a couple other small items in there that we added, like we added some um, new furniture for kindergarten classrooms. Um, and then there's just other expenses that are in there as well. So it's a best estimate at this time, right. um, but th there's some different things coming into play this year. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but I'll do my best to explain them. And Ed is here to correct me if I get them wrong. And then, um, so this year and for the next five years, and we knew this was, was coming, um, if a district keeps their per pupil cost under 10%, your tax rate is capped at a 5% increase. So that's one thing that's happening this year. So our goal is to keep our budget under a 10% increase of per pupil cost. I think that's everybody's goal. Um, the other thing that's coming into play this year, which we, we heard was coming over the last couple of years, um, there's a new formula in the tax, the way that we ca calculate the tax. And it's gonna use long-term weighted averages instead of equalized pupil counts. So in the long-term weights, if you um, your per pupil um, allocation, so for example, if you have free and reduced students, you're gonna get a different weight for those students, um, more than one. So I think it's two or two something. If you have ELL students, it's three. So your, 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 pupil count is gonna change based on the long-term weighted average. And we think that that's gonna benefit Weathersfield. Um, even though your your budget is up, that's gonna come into play um, and will be really helpful in keeping you under that 10% um, increase per student. How'd I do, Ed? You did good. I mean, really what it boils down to is how much detail do you guys want? When we talk about equalized pupil or long-term weighted average, it's great. <laughs> it takes a long time to get the nuances. Uh, you know, when you use the school board, then I'm just getting it right here. So I can show you what these things mean if you're interested. If you're not, when we get into the tax rate part of it, there's some nuances to that too. With you know, I can show you that too, but it's going to take a little bit of show and tell. And we don't have all the information yet. We don't have the I, CLA. I, I can't give you a tax rate, right. but I can give you an idea mm -hmm. about where you're headed with your current expenditure. Um, so I know we have, we have two new board members that maybe don't know that much about the equalized people. So if you want to just go over that. That would be good. So is it yeah. possible to plug this? Yeah, come on over. We'll see if yours works. <laughs> <laughs> you can come over here, Ed. And maybe um, there's a stool right here. Or you can sit. I'll move. You can sit right here. You want to sit here, Ed? Yeah. And I can move. Yeah, I can move over. I don't have an apple, though. That's okay. That's okay. I don't either. No, this is not an apple either. <laughs> it's just shiny. It's just shiny. <laughs> All right, so let's see if it works. Give it a second. And give me a chance to. Yeah. All right, this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, just to give you an idea. This is last year. When we started last year, when we were doing what we're doing tonight, what we started with was the overall budget, right? And I'll get rid of Heartland. Is it possible to share your screen so folks? Yeah, I can show you how to do that. Well, you have to join the meet. Okay. So if you go to your calendar, I will add you to the invitation right now. So. Okay. Yep, let me just get you invited. Today's the 12th, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's in your calendar.
Okay. So you should get an invitation now. Should I get it in my email? It will, but see if you open the 12th, see if it shows up. Yeah. So I think it's that one. I think it's this one on top. Yeah. So click it and then join. Join now. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> oh, somebody wants to get in. And then share your screen. And then, sh yeah, do you know how to do that? So go to this right here. Yep. And then click on your, well, it, did you close it? in your email what screen shows your spreadsheet it's not on google it's excel yeah but it, you can still share your screen no. so, there you go let's share okay, okay so here it comes again we started with the weatherfield budget in 24. there are things in revenues that are considered to be local revenue and you take the budget and you subtract out the local revenue and you come up the result is what we call ed spending and that's what goes into the formula to generate your tax rate okay now let me just make this bigger to get a cost per pupil this is ed spending per eq equalized pupil okay my computer's dying so this jumps around a little bit Okay, so last year when we put the formula together, your cost per pupil was 20,813.40. But keep in mind that this equalized pupil number has no correlation to your actual student count, okay? It's what the state uses to try to equalize educating kids across the state, all right? So they, they gave weights to different people, okay? So then, what happened was there were some towns that had a larger populations or more diverse populations, and they said, we don't think that the formula takes into account what it costs us to educate our population. So the legislature came up with Act 127, which then became a new way to count students, all right? So the confusing part here is for a lot of people is that when they look at this 355, which is what your tax rate for this year or last year was based off of, they'll say, well, wait a minute, that's not how many kids we have. Well, it isn't. And now with the new, it's gonna look even more crazy. The new formula, um, they took numbers from last year, right? Or from 24, and they said, all right, we've got to create a long-term weighted average for last year because we're going to use that to compare it to the FY25 number, all right? So these are the numbers they came up with for last year. Instead of 350, instead of, let me hide this. this. Instead of 355, it went to 539 okay so if i give you the spreadsheet <laughs> i don't know whether i should do this but i will great <laughs> so are we pretty certain on these numbers because i had heard that, i heard heard that weathersfield wasn't necessarily going to do very well with the new formula it, we're pretty certain like really, doing really well. it, it's not it's not when you say really well it really boils down to what it is you're dividing you're dividing uh 539 now into 7388757 mm -hmm. so your cost per pupil you can see yeah. it's gone down <laughs> all right but with this new act 127 what they're going to do is use this 13692 to compare it to what your budget will generate in FY25 see what i'm saying so yeah it looks good here 
But when you start to say, well, I'm going to compare this to my 25 number, that's where the rubber hits the road. But again, I can show you a spreadsheet and it's got 20 columns. It's got sparsity. It's got ELL. It's got the weights. The weights. Yeah. And it's got numbers and formulas and it's 12 tabs long. All right. That's what they've come up with. And there's really no, they've looked at the numbers. It starts with average daily membership on October 1st, and that's the baseline. And then they add the weights and the weights go on forever. The, the state gives you that number. Right. We don't make that up. Yeah. They give it to us. So. We have input in that. We can say to them, this is ADM. This right. is how many uh, ELL students we have. This is how many of this student we have. But there are other parts that they generate with a formula like spar sparsity. There's for rural instance. rural schools. Yeah, it's yeah. like how many people per square mile is part of the formula, um, because it in theory costs more money to educate. You rural, know. More yeah, rural. yeah. Um, now, when we start off with the so how are we have we have ten percent from last year. Are we starting from the twenty thousand per student? Or are we starting from the thirteen thousand? You're student? starting so, from the thirteen thousand. Okay. All right. So. I'll hide these again. But you now this is FY25. Okay. So you went from 539 to 596. Okay. We start with this budget, 8710, 543. We take out local revenue. That local revenue is your money that was left over from last year or mm -hmm. your carryover. And I used it as as an, a revenue here. Because okay. really. You know, 23. Yeah. Yeah. You sometimes take a little bit of it and put it towards right, the and you still can. But in this example, I've done that. I, I've taken the whole amount and I yeah. put it in there. Then the ed spending becomes 87 less the five, and then divided by this, 13, 6, 75, 11. So you can see it's gone down, uh -huh. and that's the comparison that they're going to make, right? Okay. So when you take a look at what your comparison is. Just hide this. And this is pre CLA. We don't have that number yet. Yeah. So I'm comparing. I would assume our CLA to be similar to last year. Probably. I don't think housing yeah. has gone up that much in yeah. the past year. So this is your this is your FY24. So this number here is this number here. Okay. okay. This number here is this number here. Mm -hmm. right. So you're actually down. Okay. So yes, you did do well. <laughs> um so you're well under the 10 percent yeah but it doesn't yeah. it doesn't speak to the dollar amount that you went up you yeah. know what i mean the comparison is now not between how much was last year compared to this year dollars uh -huh. it's more towards this formula where it's equalized pupil okay. or i mean long-term long weighted. weighted average so hey head i i have a question on that yes so you're showing it going down point 13 percent for you using a half a million dollars in local revenue funds yep. from last year right unless it's actually going up five hundred and fifty thousand. is that right we can, we can see what it would do yeah but we always like to give that money back brandon or at least most of it because it is taxes just, that have been talk. overpaid so if i take that out it's up 6.6 percent .6%. you're still under the 10 percent yeah which caps your increase at, at 5% mm -hmm. on the top of the tax rate. But, but we do in general vote to, to give that, put that money back for the taxpayers because it is really their money. I, I definitely don't question that at all. We do the same thing on the town side, um, but it's not true to say that the budget didn't is only increasing by 0.13%. Well, that's not what they were saying because the budget has obviously gone up from oh, seven million something to eight million something so it's obviously gone up picture you don't want to see your picture okay we'll go over here that make you anxious yes okay okay there we go. All right. <laughs> so is there a lag in terms of what the town's assessment rates are as far as you know we have to keep under 10 percent um is there is there any kind of well, we're, we're looking at these numbers down the road, down the road, we're changing over to this formula. What does that mean for our town itself as far as reevaluating tax rates? Are you talking about the appraisals? The yeah. Appraisal? This, this, it, this uh, has nothing to do with the reappraisal. 
this, nothing, nothing at all? No. Or is it going to balance those two? Well, the oh, it, CLA will come in. It, it yeah. does have an effect on yeah. it in that it will change your CLA. Yeah. Okay. It won't be in time for this so year. Okay, As it so gets it's closer, not, it's not in time for this year. It's It'll be by time. January 1, right? Will we have that number? Well, well the CLA Brandon. number will have by then, but the reappraisal we will right. have done yeah. by then. Yeah. The reappraisal, Brandon, is happening in the spring. Um, so we did contract with Nemerk to do the townwide reappraisal, and it probably will start sometime towards the end of next year, okay. early spring the following year. Oh, okay. So that's that's a ways so, off. That's on the end. Yeah. Not have anything to do together <laughs> yeah. right now. It's that's, not that that, that won't be helping us this time. Yeah. Okay. Right. So again. If you use the whole amount, as Brendan pointed out, mm -hmm. it, it it is down by whatever, it's down by 0.13%. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, Brent, go ahead. It, the only reason why, and I apologize, I'm not, um, I'm not arguing against the school board budget or anything like that. Um, what I'm saying though, is if you use 550,000 in fund balance, you know, that's 16 cents on the tax rate. Um, what if you have no fund balance next year right. and you have an increase? You're already starting off at a deficit in FY26. So, you know, in order to, like, if you spent all of, if, if you spent all of your funds at the school next year, you're going to start off with a revenue gap in FY26 of over a half a million dollars. And that's, that's like on the town side, we kind of, you know, we might put some of the fund balance into capital reserves and yeah. so forth that will and, help. And you, in the yeah. Future, but you might want to put a big chunk in this year. Yeah. yeah. Cause there's a quite a, I've never, I've never seen it that big before. Usually it's like around a hundred, yeah. 150 maybe is the biggest I've seen before. Yeah. So yeah. he's right. It's yeah. Gonna, but know, it is good to, yeah, we, we do year. like to set some of it aside for the capital reserve as well. Um, so we'll have to talk about the exact amount of yeah. that, but, um, yeah. you just don't want to set yourself up in FY 26 to have a, a huge gap to fill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All your, all yep. your money, so, and, and this, this cap is in place for five years, as long as you stay under the 10%. If you don't, they, um, you, you will have to go to a committee of three superintendents and three business managers. And defend your budget if it's over the ten percent. Okay. If they say okay, you still um, can access the cap. If they say no, you lose the cap for the next five years. So, but the but the thing that and it, chef, it could change. Should, I, should we talk <laughs> about that? So, think about that. They say you can spend up to ten percent, but we guarantee your tax rate won't go up by more than five percent for the next five years if you stay so on if you spend mm -hmm. up to ten percent mm -hmm. that's what this is if you just take this homestead tax rate and you multiply it by five percent that's where you're capped at you're capped at 1.74 but you could spend <laughs> way more than that mm -hmm. and still have a tax rate of 1.74 so over here so it's taking advantage of what oh. happens in year six. In year six, the well, no one's seen that. And that's why right. this is kind of like everybody's <laughs> saying, "Well, wait a minute, Th this seems too good to be true." Mm -hmm. That's the question: What happens in year six? Because if everybody does just develops a budget and they do it the way they normally do it, right? Okay, so you cap the five percent. But what if everybody says, "Well, this is a great deal. I can turn around and I can spend up to ten percent." So we're going to put in a, a new gym floor and we're gonna, generator. So you would do some stuff that you could take out immediately. You wouldn't like, I wouldn't suggest you add staff or anything because you'd own that. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you were to have projects in mind, you could throw that into the budget and essentially the ed fund would pick up that cost. And then next year, if they changed it, you'd take it out and you'd go back to where you were. <clears throat> but if, if they, if that happens and everybody does that, I mean, yeah, where's the money coming from? Though? <laughs> well, that's the other. That's thing. a legitimate question. Where that's is my it? question? Well, it comes from it comes from the Ed Fund, and the Ed Fund comes from taxpayers, and there are a whole bunch of other numbers in the formula 
like income yield and property yield and all these other numbers that they're going to have to play with to make up that 5% that they're picking up. But, but some communities are not going to have this benefit. Their, their right. equalized pupil number is going to go down, right? Uh -huh. So some, some towns are benefiting and some towns are not. Um, right. and, and the other thing to think about um, is we are in a negotiation year. So we don't know that number either, which is going to impact not the budget, but what we spend, right? Uh -huh. So when you're thinking about all these things. Yeah. And that's that's uh, for staff or for teachers? Staff, uh, teachers this year, teachers support staff this year. next year. Mm -hmm. So now when I show you this tax rate right here, I'm just saying the way I read this thing is that you won't go up by more than 5% from last year's tax rate, right? So maximum amount is 1.7478, which would be a, an 8.32 cent increase. Okay, and that would mean that the percentage increase here, instead of negative 0.13, would be 10%. Mm -hmm. right. So you'd be increasing your budget by 10.73% or 10.13% from where Brian's designed it right now. Mm -hmm. Which has a lot in it that you want it. Right. Yeah, are, we already are getting. I mean, if we go with Brian's current budget, we're already getting everything I think that we wanted. Um, to add, I don't know if there was anything else that we really, I mean, you know, some of the stuff I thought we weren't going to get because it didn't right. seem possible. Um, you know, given that we're losing the extra funds and all that, I just Correct. thought we were going to need to cut stuff, not to add stuff. So, um, so this is good news that the, uh, and, and I'm not suggesting you add stuff. Way. I'm just simply saying, yeah, that. Yeah, it, it does present a conundrum of, like you said, yeah. what happens after five years. Well, if the current rate, I mean, you're going to be, oh, it'll go, go, go up, 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 up. And also, um, now the, the wording on the voters thing doesn't have a lot to do with that tax rate. It has more to do with the equalized people. That came out of the law. Oh, is that on we the law? We don't have to put that on the yeah, oh, Okay. Have so to. you could do the, yeah. So you can say taxes are going mm -hmm. down by 0.13%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the per student, per I mean, even though it is, yeah, it, yeah, both are, yeah, okay, or you could say. Well, when you're looking at it, when you look at what you put in the uh, the warning last year, uh -huh. you put in $22,000, right? Or 20. And now you're going to put in, if, if it stays the same, 13675 it's going to beg the question, wow, what, what happened? happened? <laughs> I mean, it could have the alter, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the other effect could be people saying, wow, you're spending a lot less, What? why? But it's not that. It's yeah. the fact that this number here, the equalized people, mm -hmm. right? Equalized that people number, on long term weighted average, <laughs> yeah, went through the roof. Yeah, which in theory is uh, leveling the playing field, right? The uh -huh. towns that are have been paying more because yeah. they, the students cost more, um, it's going to level off. That's the theory. Right. right. And what I need to do is on December twenty second, after last year, I got the CLA, uh -huh. which adjusts it and. I have a spreadsheet that I've used over the last 20 years, 10 years, mm -hmm. that generates the ed spending. But it was all based on equalized pupil. Well, you can't use that spreadsheet anymore. Mm -hmm. And what I'm waiting for, and what most business managers in the state are waiting for, is something from the state to show us what we're supposed to use to generate this new tax rate. So I can't tell you what the tax rate is, but uh, is it Craig? Christian. Christian. What Christian points out is true is I can't say when it, when I get this spreadsheet what they're going to mess with to generate that that extra that money that guaranteed five percent. I don't know what they're going to put in there. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying your tax rate right now is uh, it can't go up more than one point seven four seven eight. And I'm trying to think, well, what if the formula it, it just doesn't make sense to me. That's why I want to see the spreadsheet before I, I really give you, I, I can't give you a tax rate. I can give you estimates, but not a tax rate. So we should know more at the next meeting. Okay. Which is in January. We should know more. When do you? Uh, we'll definitely know something. So next, we can, we can vote on the budget at next meeting? Yeah. Okay. yeah. We, we should, we should vote on it at the next meeting again, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit misunderstanding of 10% increase. Is that on the total operational budget of the school or the per pupilized or per pupil spending? Per pupil spending. 
Right. And ours is going down 0.13%. Right. Correct. And, and I struggled with that too. I, I struggled with that to the point where he's been losing his mind. <laughs> I, I was trying to get, like, what do I compare it to? Then the state wouldn't give us what we were supposed to compare it to. So I compared it to equalized pupil from last year. And it was like, oh my God, this isn't going to work. And then slowly but surely through talking with different people in my office and with um, the other business managers, we came up with um, like what we think is the right. And and so if you were to spend up to the 10, I wanted to know how much money, right? If, if you were going to spend right to 10%, it would be another 827,000 bucks. On top of what we've already done. On top of what you've already done. That makes zero sense to me especially in light of the governor's plea two weeks ago yeah. of school budgets being out of control. Right. And I'm, I've been looking at this for weeks and I, I swear, I, I, I looked at it too. And I thought the same thing you thought, I think that that's, that's what I'm saying. This is the time bomb. I think it's it's going to be true like for some said. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be true for some for schools. They're going to have yeah. to cut back. Some towns are going to, they're not going to get good numbers like we did. But uh, I, I think the question is, when does this pain hit yeah when yeah. this when this bill comes due i mean that 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 is my argument against maxing out that 10 yeah. percent increase is i think we look at it from the bottom line of do we have what our students we need, need? Mm -hmm. have we budgeted for what our students need to excel and beyond that i mean somebody if any gluttony in this is going to turn into paying for somebody mm -hmm. yeah. one of our fellow vermonters somewhere down the road so um i mean you weren't endorsing you know up, <laughs> upping it at all but i, I understand I, I just think it's it's gonna have to be it's like most things when this rate goes down they're okay great everything well you paid more somewhere down the road 18 two years later 18 okay. months two years later and it's hard once you get used to a higher amount to then cut back yeah, I mean, yeah, I think if you guys have done the hard work of establishing a budget of getting our students what they need, um, I like where we are. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just, uh, the more I talk to people about it, I, I'm, I'm hoping someone will say, well, you didn't do this or that's wrong. But it, I can't, I've talked to everybody about it and we, the numbers are just staggering in some cases. And it's, it begs the question of how you how do you finance this whole thing and how do you go about it, especially with what the governor said, because they have already said what we wait for is this, the Department of Taxation and Value or the Division of Taxation and Valuation comes out with what they call their projection for property yield mm -hmm. and uh, income yield. And those numbers are in that formula that generates your tax rate. And they came out with that, and there was this letter saying it's going to looking at an eighteen percent increase overall in ed spending around the state. And that's when the governor came out and said that's unacceptable. So, is the ed fund overfunded at a state level? Is it, it has the capacity to pick up this number uh, of uh, this percentage of a difference for school districts? Is it overfunded, and are they going to look at that uh, down the road? I, I I don't know, and I know that there's more than one funding source for the Ed Fund. Mm -hmm. I mean, they use rooms and meals. They use a lot of different things. They use lottery. lottery. Mm -hmm. They use uh, the state proper uh, the town property taxes. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's, it's a combination of things. Mm -hmm. Some years, what they do is they get a surplus because property uh, hotel meals and yeah, yeah rooms and tax, meals comes in tax. higher than yeah. they anticipated. So. Um, so. As far, so as far as the tax rate that our Weathersfield taxpayers would be paying, it would be going down by the 0.13%? No, I can't tell you that. Uh, uh, I can tell you that the comparison that they've given us, you're down by 0.13%. I can't give you an idea what the tax rate would be. But, but the max tax rate increase would be? Yes. If this is right, yes. Okay. This was the tax rate last year. This is the yep. tax rate this, this year, year. The times one, 105%. If you're spending... To, to the 10% increase. Okay. So, so I but think we're not. So. No, I, I mean, it, it looks like good news, but it's almost like too good to be true. So we're, we're going to hold on uh -huh. until next month Make and then we'll it. have some more, <laughs> we'll have some more updated information yeah. that should help. And can you sense. plug in a CLA of the same as last year and, and then run some numbers that way? 
Well, it's a whole different tax um, yeah, I, uh, worksheet. I would have been able to uh, yeah. if, if they hadn't changed the, the, to a long-term weighted average. Okay. But I could come up with numbers, but I don't know how accurate they would be. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether this new formula will fit into this. Because that spreadsheet's probably 15 tabs long, and they take in all this information all over the state that comes from property taxation. When you when you get the number, and if you have more information, we can always send it out before the next meeting so you can take a look at it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we should we but we should have all that information by our January meeting. Oh yeah, we should. I would okay. imagine. Yeah, I thought we would have this the sheet that the the, the spreadsheet that we need by now because we normally do. But again, this year is very very different. They've had to they've waited a long time to come out with this LTW for FY twenty five. We just got it like last week and normally we get it in the beginning of november and they've been talking about it for three years right and 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 brad is retiring right his yeah. his role is something to do with all of this yeah. and he's retiring so he has a replacement coming on board but, one other just a final question how does uh, weathersfield's per pupilized spending compare to the other towns in the su um and what is different if there's a significant difference in the per pupilized spending, um, what led Weathersfields to go down in that formula? We spend the least. Well, total spending is a lot lower. It, it really is a combination of things. It's what your spending is in the fact that the LTW went up. If you look at this, this, this answers your question right here. I mean, yeah. These are the LTWs. So Heartland, for instance, is, is up. Is up. Over 10%. Over 10%. And they're 17,261. Christine, any, any idea on why their long term weighted average went up or their spending is up? Um, any changes in their district that's are significant enough to. Not significant changes. I mean, everybody is um, figuring out how to absorb ESSER um, staff or, or not. Um, so those those are in that budget, um, but not. Uh, I will. I, they did put in. I, I just remembered. They have a new playground in their budget, which is a pretty hefty cost. But a new playground, you know, whole all the all the um, student structures to play on, which I think was about three hundred with their. Their they equipment line was about 320,000, I think. 330, and they put in more than just that. They put in a bunch of stuff. And they were giant, they put that in to see what it would do, right? And normally, if we were doing equalized pupil, it would have blown the world, yeah. blown up to, to bits. But because of what I just outlined this year, they can because fit all that. Capital projects like that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. That should come out of capital projects. But if they, did, if they reduce theirs by 0.83%, they get it all. And that goes back to what you were saying. Yeah. You want to be, is it the greater good or is it town good? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. The two aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. No, I mean, if you're but building, if you've got a roof that's leaking and you've got you the opportunity, you've got to fix it. That's so. a big ticket item. Yeah. And that's and normally again, that, that falls under the need yeah. category. Right. Normally that would come out of capital reserve. Right. But the other thing is, is that the, the state has gone through a, a, an inventory of all the buildings in the state. And they're looking at facilities, facilities, and they're looking at opening up another funding opportunity for those. And this building was a recipient of the old one where the state would give, I forget the formula, but we, it was a great deal. Mm -hmm. And Weathersfield got this school built with that. And then they were supposed to get money towards the end. It was going to be paid six months after and all this it took four years for the state to pay back the money that they owed and that was bonded so the bond went out and there was interest involved and it was so right after weathersfield's passed there was a list of probably 40 projects that had to wait seven years to get fully funded and they shut it down in 2007 they said we're not going to fund any more of this and they haven't and they haven't since then. but they've deferred like statewide maintenance and now they're looking at it again and that's why they did the building inventory. And the buildings are falling apart across the state. Some are worse. It's not good. Yeah. Yeah. So for tonight, it's it's positive. Mm -hmm. And we'll <laughs> and we'll go from there. But great um thanks to Brian and Ed. I know it's been a 
It's been a big learning curve. Yeah. Um, I guess um, I just wanted to see as far as elementary teachers, so K through five, I guess it is. Um, we're up. Uh, looks like one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So is that for one teacher or two teachers? That's actually, so that's one of the extra positions that was put in there, uh -huh. and then um, it should be. Uh, um, The answer position was put in there, and then I believe um, one of the, the interventionists was put in there as well. Okay. Yeah, there's two answer positions that you put yeah. in. Right, one's the middle level, though. Yeah. Right, right, right. So one is elementary, and the other one is the intervention position. The math intervention was under curriculum and instruction, with that item now is zeroed out. So you put it just as an elementary. Okay. So you moved it. Okay. So, so moved that got moved. Okay. I just was curious because it was seemed like a little more. Yeah. I knew we were adding the one teacher, but it seemed like a little much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then a couple of the other things that might stick out a little bit, and this is something that's stuck at the BAC, was under art education. Um, but you have to remember we voted on the full time okay, art yep. teacher, mm -hmm. and an art teacher that part of the experience. So there's quite a good thing in training there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. I'm right. English. English is that was the second <laughs> SL position. Oh, okay. Oh. Yes, yeah, so now we have two teachers instead of one. Yeah, we have one under that's the only thing. We have a world language teacher, and that number one significantly because we have a part time mm -hmm. um, world language teacher that we had hired for a very short time, and then it didn't work out. So mm -hmm. that was based on her salary to the 40% that she was getting. And so that 64,874 is roughly for a full time world language teacher. And Are we hopeful that? If it's a full time position, we'll actually be able to hire someone. Uh, I hope so, yeah. Because <laughs> we had advertised it and it's been advertised for a full time position. Yeah. It was advertised that when we hired that person, it was the one person we had to fly with somebody that was only could work 40%. Mm -hmm. So this 64 is a part time? That's a full time. Okay. Full -time. And that's, that could go up or down depending on the, the amount of years of experience. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a rough and the, guess. And the that. education. The other thing I have is the health, the health teacher. What so what's going on with that? Because I thought we will kind of discuss a shared position. I didn't realize that was going right. on the budget. Yeah, right now we put it as a full time position that, that yeah. could end up being a shared position, but we want a budget for because it's hard to find somebody again. So if we can find somebody and we can share more than willing to share with another school, and we can do that. But with so payroll, so the yeah. worst case scenario there. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing so that's average, yeah. yeah. The other thing that's gone up dramatically is the health insurance. It's a sixteen point eight increase. Again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And we have no control over that. That's state negotiated. So <clears throat> then I noticed um I didn't see a bus on here for the algebra class. Is that or did I just miss it? Mm -hmm. Probably in I think they want some Yeah, the transportation one is that's more for field trips. And then that's coming back. That's all part of the transportation, right? Yeah, so that's coming out of our regular part of our extra assessment. I believe it's in there. Because the kids get there on their own. That's how we do have one student. Yeah. The Windsor bus on the way to mm -hmm. school. The other four students that are going to Alfred get there on their own, and from them, all five students come back on each single bus. And it's in the okay. S. It's in the SU transportation. Yeah, well, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not in this one. No. Okay. The health insurance increase. Why are many of the health insurances less than the FY twenty four budget? Well, Teachers with less family. <laughs> Depend, yeah, it just depends on what they take. Yeah, it kind of depends based on if the teacher had is a single person or has a family. And you've got new staff this year, so and you move staff. And you move staff around in there. Or you have 
staff with college students that have left the roles. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe elephant in the room, but can we talk about the SCU budget? Sure. Up and what's driving that? Just give us an overview. Yeah, I was gonna let me go back in my brain. Um, <laughs> it was um, the the biggest um, increase with special ed. I think it was a I want to say eight percent increase. I think the admin and ops budget, which is the administrative budget, went up. I think two point three percent. Your share looks bigger because your your pupil count went up, and it's you pay based and on you pay based on right. Um, so Heartlands went down, and yours went up. I think that was the case, um, which happened last year as well. But that helped you with the equalized pupil number. So I think it helps you with the weighted number as well. But there were no um, there were no positions added, I don't believe. Jamie could help me remember. Yes, uh, the DEI, the DEI coordinator was was in that budget, but that was the only position that was increased. Um, that was paid out of ESSER this current year. And you didn't lose any ESSER funded employees? Um, or give up, I should say. Yes, we did. Yeah. There were some um, there, there were some people that were ESSER funded that were shared between dist districts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, at the S, no, I mean, we didn't lose the DEI. She was, that position was in the ESSER funds, taken out of ESSER funds. Next year, it will be in the SU budget. Um, we did have, I don't know if you remember, Vince, you, I don't think you were on the board then. Initially, we hired a recovery coordinator with ESSER funds, and that position was absorbed in the SU budget last year. And it's, you know, it's part of our strategic plan, a data coordinator. Um, and that position is Brittany Preston. And um, so she's in the SU budget, but that was a, as of last year. So that's why it's up. Mm -hmm. And particularly impactful in, in Weathersfield because of your pupil count. Yeah. Is there any way to tell, so the 28% of uh, increase in the SU assessments, 16% of that, 20% of that is due to the significant number of uh, enrollment, uh, uh, higher enrollment at Weathersfield. At Weathersfield. One mm -hmm. percentage of that is tied to our increased enrollment. Yeah, I think Larry did that in the budget. Um, he, he laid that all out. I can get it, I can send it to you. Yeah, yeah. He's very thorough and <laughs> explains it very well. Do you have it? I just have the spreadsheet that he did. Is that this current year? Yeah. And luckily, that does send the balance itself out with the yeah I, with the other number. Yeah, people spending was education. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting. It's <laughs> too good to be true. Some guy in the No, knock on wood. Knock on wood. That was an education. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll get that sent to you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And I think it's a good thing for the community that we're growing as a school, as a mm -hmm. town. People see us as a place they want to come with their kids. I think that's a good answer. Yeah, that's not happening everywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> the other direction. Did the budget advisory committee have anything that really stuck out that they are unhappy about or that they the are? Budget? I'll be blank. Just I mean, the SU budget? The SU budget is huge. Um, if this budget was to go to the town, it would not be voted on. It would be denied. Um, and we went through it, right? And we, I, I'll speak for myself, but I think, you know, the other people are like, you can nickel and dime. You can take a thousand out, a thousand mm. out, keep a thousand out. But really, if you look at it, it's the SU budget that we as a budget advisor don't have a say in. So, you know, I, I don't approve this budget. Like, I would never like that's ridiculous in my opinion. Um, so I guess that's more of my event, and mm -hmm. like I know that we're a little bit outnumbered in the board on the SU board. Um, but looking at the board and looking at the agenda and the minutes for the board meeting in October, like we had one board member present when the SU presented the budget. 
you know, we only have three, which is already yeah. under, you know, under numbered, and we only had one. Like, that's just sad, in my opinion, that mm. Weathersfield gets the raft, and we now have this crazy budget that we could have potentially had to have presented to the town to then be denied. Because I'm going to tell you, like, the town's not going to approve a budget like this. So, for reference for everybody online and here, what do other, di uh, what is, Windsor and Heartland have for numbers on this board. I, I just don't. Yep. Um, so each town um, has three, three board members on the SU board. So Heartland has three, Weathersfield has three, West Windsor has three, and Windsor has three. Okay, but so Mount has six. Mount right. has six. Right. Yeah. Weathersfield has three, right. and Heartland has three. Right. So Mount has six, and Weathersfield has six because there's two towns there. Right. <clears throat> Has that board voted on your budget, Christine? On the SU budget? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's yes. already approved. There's nothing we can do about that at this point. Yeah. That is set. It was approved. Um, the process for that is um, there's a budget committee with representation from each each of the school boards, the local school boards. Um, Larry Dower spearheads it, goes through it. Um, they meet three or four times and then bring the budget to the SU, which happened in October. Sometimes it doesn't get voted on in the in the first round. This year it did. Um, it, it, it was up. Um, it looks significantly up for Weathersfield based on your per pupil count, but the increase overall, you know, seemed reasonable for people that were voting on it, I guess. So and, and sometimes people get a little frustrated when they don't understand the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, has that budget been provided to the town of Wethersfield in full? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's in the board portal. Um, I think Larry linked it in one of my newsletters, I think. I'm not quite sure on that. Um, but it, I mean, we're trying to be as transparent as possible um, throughout the, the process and with the information. So if there if there are things that we can do to to be more transparent, please please give us that feedback and we'll we'll work on it because we're not we're not trying to hide anything. It is the cost of the SU services, and I know I know this comes up in Weathersfield. I know Anne Marie asked some questions last year, and Larry kind of walked her through. Well, this is what it would cost if you ran your own SU, mm -hmm. and and it didn't turn out to be a the savings. Yeah, so I get it. I, I'm not you know I'm not. Um, downplaying the increase it, it is large and and we want you to get what you pay for for sure yeah. so what is the increase yeah what what is the increase Christine oh the overall su um hold on I want to give it to you Ed, Ed will look at look at it I want you just want the Weathersfield portion the Weathersfield increase is about a half a million dollars yeah for the su for our su assessment Okay. And what does the SU do for us? So special ed, special education, um, curriculum instruction assessment, um, superintendent, business manager, payroll, transportation. HR, transportation, technology, Grant food service, management. grants management. I mean, there is a lot that goes on that is behind the scenes. So it might not look like there's a lot going on, but um, those are, you know, those are a lot of the services that the SU provides that, um, some of it's state mandated, um, you know, tr transportation, curriculum, yeah, special ed has to be at the SU level. So those are the services that we provide. And I'm happy to, I'm happy to send you that presentation as well, if you're interested. Yeah, I'd like to see it because I do get questions from time to time about this and you yep. know, the Weathersfield Budget Advisory Committee uh, is not wrong. That it yep. does seem like a large increase, but I also don't fully understand the budget, so I can't really comment on it. Um, yep. and I think, you know, as a representative. Sure, we can. I'm happy to do that. I like to see that. Okay. Oh, you just, um, you've mentioned Christine that there was a budget um, committee mm -hmm. meeting. Are there minutes available for those meetings online? So I don't think that we took minutes. No, Jamie. With Jamie was the Weathersfield representative. Um, I I do know that Larry put the information in the board portal as we went along. Yeah. Thank you. But we could 
maybe advertise that better, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is that board not subject to the Vermont Open Meeting Law? Yes, it is, but it's not. Uh, it's a uh, one representative from each board. So they're not a, a board when they're meeting together. That makes sense. It's a committee. It's a committee. Yeah, it's a budget committee. Made, oh, up, it, made up of three board members, one from each board. I just didn't know that budget advisory committees were exempt from taking minutes. Yeah, I, I'll look into that. Um, we did not, we have not taken minutes in my experience there. You've been on there long, longer than I've been here. Is yeah. it an open meeting? Like, can anybody log on or it's just exposed? You were well, just again, the, the, the way we attack this as a budget advisory committee, I think, was to look at the 15% increase in overall costs for the Weathersfield budget. And felt that was incredibly unsustainable. Um, before we had the discussion of the people's spending, um, I, I'm interested to hear the board. Uh, uh, if we went to the uh, uh, voters with a 16% increase, how would they respond to that? Um, uh, provided it goes, the, the per pupil spending goes according to plan, I, I see no problem with this budget, especially because there are some capital items in there, like the gym right. board and, and furniture for. Um, kindergarten and things like that. So there are, there is some capital mm -hmm. spending in there that's appropriate. Um, and it does have everything that it, it sounds like the board expected out of its educational experience for children. Um, without that though, I think it's an irresponsible budget to put to the voters. Um, so that, that was our, uh, uh, and, and I think we, it would have been helpful for us to have the educational or per people spending discussion prior to us looking at it, because I would have looked at it through a different lens. That would be the only feedback that I would have. And that's great feedback, and we um, we're learning, <laughs> learning yeah. as we go. Um, and I also feel like you know, this is my second year on the board, and um, you know, I've been on the board for a long time, and I know it's really disheartening. Can't really say that, but it's 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 really upsetting um, to say that the SU budget it is what it is. You can't do anything about it. And our town people will come to us and say, mm. well, why weren't you there to represent the town in that aspect? Well, and we, have, we have three board members on it, though, right? Where were they? Why didn't the other two show up? But we don't, we don't, we don't, we're not on the same board. This is the Weathersfield board is different from the SU budget board. So, so. You have one. Each each board has one rep on the budget committee. I see. And, but and Jamie did attend all those. Meetings. Yeah, Jamie was there. The <laughs> vote on that budget, the presentation was in October, and I I can't speak to somebody not being there, but um, that is what. Yeah, it's hard for us yeah. to like get the budget in December and say, by the way, you can't do anything about this part. Mm -hmm. just yeah. Commit. And no. It's hard because you know, like you said, it's a sixteen percent increase from last year. Mm -hmm. to, just to clarify, uh, this as far as the SU budget goes, that's um, special ed. A majority of that budget uh, is okay. special ed. No, I'm not. I'm not placing blame. Yeah. Uh, on any particular spot, it's just special ed. As far as we can't do anything about the budget. Um, Obviously, there's things procedurally we can do to minimize costs and whatnot, but you don't have the choice to provide those special ed services. I have a child with special ed. Okay, so, <laughs> so I, so I mean, understand that completely. As far as that goes, I, I mean, so I think the timing of looking at those numbers, it's like you were saying, it's critical because if we're going to be able to do anything about that, it's going to be procedural. You know what I mean? From the from the onset, because uh, as you know, we, we don't have a choice but to no. provide those services. Yeah, but, no, I absolutely but, am. but so, I mean, I guess my question is, as a, as a budget advisory committee member, is there something procedurally in, other than just earlier with the numbers that you think we could do to, or that would be helpful to rein in some of that or I to offer maybe, advice on it? Maybe having a the one of the committee members come to us earlier so we can understand what's going on prior to it being finalized. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, that would be helpful, I think. Mm -hmm. I think we need to have a better understanding of what. Yeah, we um, have we have in the past talked about starting up the BAC earlier. Yeah, I think um, that would be helpful because then we can yeah. understand the SU's side and where they're coming mm -hmm. in yeah. with the numbers and how it's going to affect. Yeah. I'm always kind of surprised by it because I don't I start thinking about budget in like November, <laughs> December, and I'm always surprised by the October meeting. It always kind of cuts, cuts, yeah. You know, yeah. catches me off guard because I'm like budget and they're we're voting on the budget today oh my gosh <laughs> um because it impacts the local budgets yeah we try to get it done in a timely manner um but that's a great suggestion and we can be i think it would be helpful yeah. because you know yeah i get it like, yeah I mean, it's super difficult though to get your budget done that fast and there's so many moving parts with budgets i mean when yeah. you get your health insurance figures like november mid-november and then workers comp and all that it's difficult to get all the numbers assembled that quickly. So I don't know if there's something you can do. I'm almost wondering if there's a bite-sized chunk that we can take off in terms of a procedure and what leads to the biggest portions of the increases that maybe we can address. You know, we're going to have input on this this year, this upcoming year. That way we don't have to worry about all these hypotheticals of not knowing where the health insurance yeah. is going and all the rest of this stuff and just say, okay, this is what we can actually have some control and some input on. And if we can narrow it down, perhaps with mm -hmm. Christine's input and your guys' input, I mean, thank you for stepping in and doing what you do under the timing you do it. We appreciate it. Um, but that is the only way that I can see that we make some forward progress instead of everybody getting back on their heels. About. Very true. Oh, well, what's, what's the, what's the mechanism for us to to get that information first or to have that control that you're talking about. We don't have, there's nothing in process. We just right, so that's what I'm suggesting. Creating so a process. can we do that? <laughs> well, I think what I think um, Deb said, having the representatives that are on this, mm -hmm. the SU budget committee right. reporting out at, at the local board meetings is probably a really good practice or, I, or I'm doing it or Larry's coming and doing it so that you're informed earlier of, kind of where where we're at um and i will concur with mark a lot of the the costs are out of our out of the su use control special ed is special ed and we have to provide those services and we want to provide those services um transportation costs i mean we can't control the health care we we control supplies and salary pretty much just like the, just like the local budgets the supplies are so small. and they are yeah it's not right right, right. yeah the other thing that i want to point out that that is huge part of the increase is the ESSER positions. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we were looking at that the last few months, we're like, this is not going to be good. We're either going to double class sizes or we're going to have to make room in this budget for to keep the teachers that we have. Right. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, we knew that when we took the ESSER positions, right? I mean, yeah, we knew we these were only funded yep. for a short right. term. So, we did. Um, but it looks big, I'm saying. So correct. it looks big because 100%. we're absorbing Two lesser yeah. positions. I mean, right. that's two teacher salaries. So, I mean, the long and the short is that you either, you know, you have 12 students or you have 24 students or you keep that teacher on. So that, you know, we haven't even discussed that like in full, but I know that was one of the things that we really were like, we're going to have to absorb this or we have bigger class sizes, which I know has been an argument too. Yeah, yeah it's a back and forth. Some people are for it, some people are not. But that was one one thing for wanting to absorb some of these ESSER positions that we've gotten used to, right? Yeah. Um, um, and so some that was a big it's, it's, reason for increase too. Yeah, and, and yeah. some of the, you know, we are faced with more challenges post-COVID. I mean, we, we're, we're struggling with mental health. We're struggling with behaviors. Um, I don't want to say academic learning loss because we're going to get there. We're going to get through that, but it feels like um, the needs are greater for our, for our kids, and we want to make sure we're per, we're meeting those needs. And a lot of that is done through staffing. So that's just the honest answer. And um, as far as the SU budget goes, the amount the same thing happened last year, and I freaked out about it. And then the equalized people came in and saved it last year. So I assumed, or I hoped that the same thing was happen again this year. Because the reason why our amount went up was, a lot of it was because we have more students, others went down. 
And so it usually ends up balancing out as it seems to be doing again. Yeah, so but two we years try ago, not to, we try not to take it to, yeah, yeah. When I was the principal at Heartland, the same thing happened to Heartland. Our numbers went up. I think yours went down or Mount of Scotty's went down and, and the SU portion of the Heartland budget went up considerably. So it does ebb and flow with yeah. population trends, but it's still, it's still a big number. Yeah. When does normally the equalized food bill stuff come out? Because I mean, I would have felt horrible if we came here and cut this and slash this budget and presented it to you guys without mm -hmm. knowing that information. Well, first of all, we don't have equalized people anymore. Yeah. Or, <laughs> we keep saying that. <laughs> Maybe December 22nd or something. What are we calling no, it now? No, it's CLA. CLA. It's oh, the, it's in the, a normal year, it would have been out in, you know, November. So what, what, in order to get the SU budget, you usually go with the numbers from the prior year, because if you don't, you want to get the board, the, the SU board, the numbers as fast as possible. So you use the numbers from the year prior. We have two hands up. Oh, okay. Carrie and Becky had their hands up. Okay, Carrie. Online. Thank Carrie. Yes, thank you. I um, actually have two questions that aren't exactly related, but one is, um, is there an actual F number of students that are like our enrollment went up versus where other schools were not like do we know what that number of students is you that? that number is going to be smaller than the um what is it called the long-term weighted, the, the long weighted average um <clears throat> it's you're not actually a pupil isn't really a pupil <laughs> could be more it's, it's in right. our case it's more like we have 245 students, but they're counting us at 539. That makes no sense. I know I'm excited that's the case, but I just don't understand yeah. how that works. It's, it's just like if you think about it, out of the 245 kids, if your free and reduced rate is 40%, 40% of those kids are going to be worth two kids okay. in the formula. If you have an ELL student, they're going to be worth three, three kids. So it, it's just because the cost of educating those students is greater. Yeah. I get it, but I just don't understand. Like, it sounds like ours changed dramatically. It did. <laughs> so did we see a 30% increase in pre and reduced lunch? Did we see a we, no, they weren't count, they, they, weren't, they, they weren't doing it that way before. Okay. The, so your, your, your free and reduced so, rate went up considerably okay. this year because um, we're not, um, the because the way they collect the data is different. Um, it used to be you fill out the form. Right, for, not made it simpler, yeah. And so it's based on, census data right or no um, it's based on medicaid medicaid has so that data too direct, and you yeah. take it right from medicaid so it's underreported right. in a lot of places because people didn't like to fill out that right report. so it did so, go up okay. you're, you're um actually heartland was the highest in the su for the last uh, six or seven years um windsor is the highest right now and weathersfield is the second highest so heartland is less which impacts their long-term weighted <laughs> So more or less well. our reporting rate increased. Yes. Okay. Yep. It, it, I mean, it actually feels like it, it should. Like, that's more fair. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Because it's, I mean, not everybody wants to right. tell everybody their problems or their, right. and, it's not, and if the government already knows it some other way, why not? Right. Yeah. So, Carrie, um, we, I don't have the exact, per, the numbers. I don't know. Did that, did that help answer, the, answer your question? Um, you can say probably, no. probably not because not not because you didn't answer it effectively. I think it just doesn't make sense to a lay person, and it's just so new. Yeah. Um, my other question, and I'm not asking for a historical timeline or anything, but has there ever been discussion? Because I'm fairly new to the community about the SU budget being presented and then kind of contingent on local budgets passing theirs. So that if our budget were to fail and we needed to go back and just I'm making up a number, we have to cut five hundred thousand dollars that mm -hmm. we could in turn look to the SU board and say, look, maybe a data coordinator or a building needs to be reduced or I'd, so I'm just curious if that has ever been hashed out. And it can obviously be a yes, because I don't I know we don't have a lot of time, but. I don't think that can happen once it's passed. I don't think you can go back and cut it. You no, no, I don't mean now. I just mean like seems, going seems forward. Ways. Oh, I think that's at the state level. I mean, I can look into that. I mean, we don't, we just follow what we're supposed to do um, based on what we're told yeah. to do. So 
I can, we I can need their budget at... in order to figure out what our budget can be. So they have to do theirs. The SU has to do theirs first. Yeah. Right. I, I understand that. I just more just wondering if there's any legal in... avenue to say that it needed to be contingent. Like the SU board would say, we're this is the budget. We are prepared yeah. to send local budgets, then do theirs. And if there needed to be cuts that yeah. some of those potentially could come from the SU rather than our local budgets that are directly impacting the students. Yep. I wrote it down, Carrie. I don't know, I don't know the answer, but I'll find out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And who else do we have? Becky. Becky. Oh, I just wanted to speak um, historically some because I was on the budget committee a lot of years and I was on it probably when we were our own SU and separate SU and um, when special ed was in our budget still, you know, before the state mandated that it go over to the SU level. And so every year, the th same thing, comment that somebody made about the SU budget is what you made, we people made because special ed, you just, you know, it is what it is and we can't cut that. So, um, with that being at the SU level, that's going to be a big portion of what we're, you know, now seeing now. So the, it's sort of the same thing. It's just in a different place. So Got I can it. look at it that way. And then I was thinking that part of the whole SU and Ed might be able to speak to this or you, Christine. Um, I think with the special ed budget, one of the ideas about it does ebb and flow, like sometimes ours has gone down. Our, our portion is a lot less. Um, is, but it also, they felt like it would be more, um, equitable long-term in case you get a student that is a very high cost one year and just one town taking it. But I may be wrong about remembering. No, no, that's right. Um, I think if you looked historically, I don't know Weatherfield, I know Hartling because I was the principal there. Mm -hmm. Um, when it was, when special ed was in your local budget, that could happen. You could have a student move in and it would cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. So bringing the special ed, um, centralizing it in the SU is supposed to level that out. So you might have some bumps, but they're not gonna be as, as big. Mm -hmm. So yes, thank you, Becky, that is accurate. And I think you, you would see that if you looked mm -hmm. at the historical data, um, but yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, oh, got another hand. Another hand. Carrie, yep. Carrie? Uh, just sort of a follow up question, I guess. Um, so I understand that there's the formula that spreads the cost or we get assessed for special ed. Is that directly correlated to what our special ed needs are, or that's back to that no. sort of? It's based on the total number of students. Or the equalized people. The or equalized people. Equalized people. Yeah. Which comes from the state. But the equalized people is going away. Right. So it'll be right. based on the out long term, uh, long -term weighted, weighted up. So we could have it look like we have four hundred students that need special ed services, but in reality could have twenty, but we're gonna pay more than other schools. Yes. Your your Our, portion of the SU budget is based on equalized people numbers at this point. But it would be if you continue that, you would be long-term weighted average. So, right. in the past, uh, Carrie, I did a formula where I used to take um, all of the uh, special ed students that were in a school, and I took those kids, and then I and then I took the kids that were extraordinary, which were higher cost, and I came up with a percentage, and I came up with a formula that generated a percentage, and that's how. We had an assess. We did equalized pupil for two, for for the uh, business office and for early childhood, and then we did a special formula for special ed. And um, this the board at the time. This is probably eight to ten years ago, and they decided that that was too complicated because I'd spend days trying to explain how I came up with the numbers, mm -hmm. and they just said we're going to go with equalized pupil for everything, which. I mean, some years you may pay a little more than you're getting, and other years you might pay it's less. It's hard to break right. it out now that it's at the SU. It was a lot right. easier when it was at your local right. districts because I, you got to figure out how many uh, teachers you have, how many paraprofessionals you have, how many of the contracted services you're using, 
so it's it's it'd be a little bit more complex now to do the formula that I used to do. Is there a, is there a data collection that would be able to report what I don't even know what the right words are, but however many students the percentage of ours of have needs mm -hmm. across the SU because if yep. um, it would be interesting to see how many special ed students we have in comparison to other schools, but we're paying more for special ed services, which I, I'm hearing that it is just what, the way it is. But um, I think that if we could see the hard data, like maybe we have more needs than, I mean, the public mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily, we wouldn't know. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I also want to make sure um, having a child too on children with special needs, that they're also getting the services that they need mm -hmm. that, they may not be getting, I realize staffing shortages is a problem, but I, it, it just doesn't always add up. And I would love to be able to see um, more data specifically on the special ed portion of the budget to feel like it's really fair and or justified against what other schools are paying. Yeah. So I think wh what you're asking is the percentage of special ed um, students in Weathersfield compared to the other schools in the SEO. Correct. Okay. Yep. We can do that. Plus, doesn't the thank you special ed that we pay for also include high schoolers too, though? Mm -hmm. It does. Yep. So it's not just the kids in this building. Right. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um. Any other questions? I don't see any. Those are great questions. Yeah. So. That's I certainly lot. have learned a lot tonight. So yeah, <laughs> yep. Okay, so uh, yeah. um, so we are going to got a hand, oh. Lisa. Lisa. Oh, she, maybe she was. Sorry, trying. this is uh, this is Alex um here um, on Lisa's computer. I was just going to echo the same thing that Carrie just said about about that and wondering what the data is and maybe you can't share specific to each school the number of pupils within that um, spec ed number but I don't know if there's uh, I think and maybe I'm just drawing conclusions and correct me if I'm wrong Carrie but if we're paying for the extra services uh, above other schools then you know I'm in the same situation where it's like well let's let's get let's get some more services then if we're paying more money for it yeah i'll i'll find those numbers out of those percent percentages and mm -hmm. bring them back okay yeah thank you i have a question out of curiosity do we have any shared employees yes we i mean lost. for whether does weathersfield have shared employees that come from the seo yes. yes okay and how are those people paid or they're what, they're what, paid at SU budget. Out of your budget. Yeah, okay. out of the SU budget. They're okay. mostly special ed um, staff, but right. yeah. Okay. No administrative, no, and nothing else. I mean, you got me. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> but no. But, I mean, yeah. <laughs> An ad, and you know. <laughs> but yeah, there are teachers that are shared across the SU. Um, speech, we have mental health people. That, yeah. So, and how yeah. is the SU? Or Dividing up those salaries, what is it by that number? By equalized people. Well, that's yeah. different. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Okay. That's how we've done. We're just calling the equalized people. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All those salaries are work <laughs> into the to the uh, special right. ed assessment. Right. Yeah. What's what's the new term? It's the long term weighted long, oh, average. Right, <laughs> LWA. Just by the the time we get it stuck in our head, they're going to change it. So. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Nutrition. Bacteria, food, yes. whatever you want to call it, is the only one that's not calculated by equalized, equalized people. people. That's by people in the building. In the building. Yeah. yeah. And the that's board who utilizes that service. The board decided that a couple years ago. Yeah. 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 And we've stuck to our guns on that. It's <laughs> calmed down because no one pays for the Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's all free. Now. Well, not free, but, but it's based on the, the so number of students in the building. So, um, okay. Okay, so um, so we're gonna wait until we're gonna postpone this till next month when we'll hopefully know yep. more about the the details CLA of the CLA and the, yep. the long-term average yep. and all that. And um, 
So you've got, I've got budget on the agenda? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, for our next agenda, yeah, budget will be on there. Yeah. And we will have to vote on the budget. Then we should vote on the well. budget. If, if you can't vote on it that night, we will have to add another meeting in January to uh -huh. make sure we get it done. Yeah. A, I think it's 30 days before. Just, yeah. Yeah. And it needs to get into the town report, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, um, let's see. Um, okay. So then we have um, curriculum that Jamie wanted to yeah. talk about. So I just wanted to touch quickly on curriculum. There, I've spoken to numerous teachers and have also had a conversation with Angie Ledoux. Mm -hmm. And there seem to be some concerns about age appropriateness for the new ELA program. Um, and also some equity issues for children that have learning disabilities and such um, that are known about. Um, so I just wanted to propose, is it possible that two of us board members could have a meeting with teachers and kind of be their support that if we need to push back to the SU, we can provide that extra support to them. Okay, so, um, so we have two board members. Yeah, up to two. To meet with Weathersfield teachers. Yeah, whoever wants to participate in like a safe meeting that they can speak out. And if there's, you know, from that, if there's something that we can assist them with with pushing back, um, and there may not be, like, but yeah. Oh, there will be. It's the, <laughs> it's the first year of a curriculum, it's hard. Well, a, and, and it's a, I mean, like, yeah. I understand it's hard. Um, Angela do replied back that, you know, she's aware of the issues and that it should resolve itself in three to five years. I'm having a hard time understanding that, though. I'm also have a hard time with, we have many kids that are struggling because mm -hmm. of COVID, mm -hmm. that now you push this new curriculum that has equity issues from those with IEPs and whatever. Mm -hmm. We're not really doing them a service, really. Yeah. So, yeah. So my sure. son is not on an IEP, and his grades for ELA have tanked this year, big time tanked. And I had this conversation with his teacher. So it's huge. It's sad to log into his power school and see his grade level. And she has heard me. It's pretty much the majority of his class is seeing that grade. It's nothing that he's not doing. What grade? Is, what grade is okay. fifth grade? Yeah. I, yeah, and those are the, those are the grades. I mean, we talked about it today at our administrative team meeting. Those are the grades that are going to have the hardest time because they they've missed all of the foundational skills that this program has, right? So they've missed K one, two, three, um, that 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 foundation. So uh, it's not just a Weathersfield um, issue; it's across the SU fourth and fifth grade in particular. So might it make more sense to to put a curriculum in and sort of have it? go with the kids, like not put it into a school all at once, but to do it kindergarten, then the next year, kindergarten, first year, then the next year, kindergarten, first year, and second grade, and in so theory, on. In theory, that's a great idea. I think like when you're trying to do train your teachers in, in uh -huh. the program, yeah. it, it, it would complicate that, you know, it would take uh -huh. years to do that. I think that, um, I think it's great to hear what the teachers are, are feeling. We're trying to elicit that information as well. I know that it is, it's hard. The kids are the kids. Some of the kids are having a hard time um, accessing either the units or some of the units. The teachers have reported are great and they fit into things that they've been teaching in the past. Some are new and they're not as exciting. Um, I know from my experience as a teacher, implementing a curriculum in year one, you got to learn it yourself, which is which is a big left for teachers um and and once you've learned it and you feel it out and you understand the parts that you really need to deliver explicitly and there are parts that you don't have to spend as much time on um and you can supplement we're just not there yet because it's brand new and and i think angie's i don't think she i hope she didn't mean like we'll be fine in three to five years it takes three to five years for a teacher to become an expert in a curriculum it's a long and and We'll hear teachers say, and then we go into a new curriculum after five years. They're not wrong. Um, we try to do a, do a better job, but this program is based in the science of reading, and so in K two, they are they are it's skill based for a big portion, which is going to give them the skills they need to be readers. And I don't know if you've heard this, if you're not in education, but 
K3, you're learning to read. Three, beyond, you're reading to learn. So if you're lacking those skills in those grades, it's gonna be, it's gonna be difficult. So we need to figure out how to support those kids and try to have fidelity to the program so that you know we can see the growth um, that's happening with the kids because that's the ultimate goal. But I, we hear you. Um, and those conversations are happening already with teachers. So I'm, I'm thrilled that you, you want to advocate for them. They're not afraid to tell us <laughs> how it's going. Um, I was in the other day in Weathersfield and I walked into a class and they were taking a quiz and I went, oh, I'm so sorry. And she said, no, no, come in and ask them. <laughs> ask them about me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I did. And some of them like, liked it. Some of them said it's hard. Some of them said, um, you know, it's easy. Some of them said, some of the some of it's boring um so it was it was a mix but we, we need to figure out how to make sure they all get what they need so so thank you for bringing that up um so do, do we have two board members that would be interested in doing this i mean i obviously will <laughs> <laughs> Or somebody else. Oh, yes. No, I, You're I'm good? Maxed out. No. Okay. He's on the he's on the yeah. negotiations yeah. committee. I will, I will. Oh, well, yes. But I just if you really wanted to, since you have a student involved, I just thought you might be more How about one of the two of us. Can we bounce back and forth? Sure. Because I'm here frequently doing yep. other things anyway. So if we could okay. coordinate those two. Okay. So we'll so we can appoint the three of you and then just make sure never more than two of you show up to a meeting. <laughs> yeah. right. Otherwise, trouble. Send me away, Otherwise, we have to get we have to warn it and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. So okay. Um, and then I guess so I'll take a motion to um, to appoint Jamie, Mark, and Sarah. I'll make a motion. Okay. To um, to a committee to meet with teachers regarding a new curriculum. So that's. Um, Vincent is making that motion. All in favor, do any further discussion? The other thing I forgot to mention, sorry. Okay. Um, the curriculum department is um, planning a curriculum information night for the communities to, okay. to look into the, to help share information about the curriculum. Okay. I think they're um, March, so it's a bit of, bit of a ways out, but they feel like that's important. Mm -hmm. So that's coming as well. Okay, all right. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Okay. Um, so Jane, I'm gonna make you that in charge. Okay. <laughs> you can uh, set them up and you know, let everybody know. Okay. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, oh, then we have, so anything else on the curriculum? Okay, water. Water. So is Brandon still on? He's still not? here. Uh, Brandon. <laughs> so um, last Friday we got a notification from the town of Lowesfield that our water had PFAS. PFAS. Yep. Yeah, thank you. In it. So um, and the letter was a little bit. Um, of, you can't boil it. You can't do this to get rid of it. So we went ahead and the air on the side of caution and said, we're gonna fill the drinking fountains. We're going to not let kids drink out of them. We got bottled water in for cooking and then we're providing water. We sent out the email right away on Friday to allow families to know that this was here and um, that kids should bring water if they could from home that's already in a water bottle. And we've been getting, like I said, giving out water bottles. And then we did find out that it does, even though our numbers are up point one five Brandon. So there. Brandon, is it what's what amount is it up? Uh, yes, it's up uh, two. It's what was the question again? I'm sorry. What's the total number that we're over right now for the town for parts per trillion? <laughs> yes. Um, PPT. <laughs> so, where did you leave off? I'm sorry, I had to walk away for just a second. He, he just he just was curious as to what the amount that we're over is right now. And okay, so we're not we're not exactly over. So what happened was the EPA reduced their PFAS advisory from seventy parts per trillion down to zero point zero two parts per trillion for PFAS. The state of Vermont is set at 20 parts per trillion. 
we tested 2.15 parts per trillion. So we're 17.85 parts per trillion below the state standard for PFAS. And basically what happens when you get to 20 parts per trillion, that's the maximum contaminant level. So at that point, the state would issue a no drink, no cook, don't use the water for anything except for um, you know, using the bathroom and the shower and so forth. Um, but we're nowhere close to we're nowhere close to those numbers right now. It's still concerning that there's PFAS in our water, and we certainly are not discrediting the EPA's notice. I think it's really to raise awareness and to get everybody moving on strategies to reduce PFAS in your water. Um, moving to bottled water isn't necessarily the best option either because the Food and Drug Administration does not test for PFAS um, in, in bottled water. So, you know, I think it was the John Hopkins University that did a study on this and they found PFAS in 39% of bottled water that they tested and some of which was pretty alarming, um, pretty alarming parts per trillion inside the water. So it's, it's something that we, this is the first time we ever had it detect, but this is also the first year the EPA set their limits low enough for us to actually detect it at those levels. Um, so I'm not sure if our water actually changed. We hired a water quality engineer to help us through this. Because, you know, the EPA, they proposed a, a maximum contaminant level of four parts per trillion. So that's 16 parts per trillion less than the state. And if they do that, you know, that we're still 50 percent below mm -hmm. that uh, that requirement. But we, we don't want to we don't want to increase our PFAS levels. We want to decrease them. And this is the first time we've had to work on decreasing, uh, decreasing our PFAS levels. So um, the EPA right now, they don't have all the answers. They're still trying to learn how to do that. Um, I didn't agree with the way that the EPA did this because they kind of just dropped their numbers by 69.98 parts per trillion and which if you test above 0 0.02, it triggers the health advisory and the health advisory was very vague. Like when Brian and I met on Friday, we had just received the notice. Um, so we, we wanted to take extra precautions until we learned more information. Um, and, you know, we learned a lot throughout the weekend and earlier this week, we met with Windsor, in the town of Springfield. The town of Springfield similarly um, tested positive for PFAS, and their numbers are 20, uh, excuse me, 2.98 parts per trillion um, in one of their wells. Um, it, a similar thing happened out in Stowe, um, I believe Killington. And the monitoring period is between October 1st to December 31st. And since this is the first year of the new EPA advisory at 0 0.02 parts per trillion, we're thinking these are going to be triggered all over the country. Um, yeah. So that's where we're at right now. Um, you know, I talked to the state of Vermont groundwater and drinking water protection division, and they did confirm that, you know, not, not only them, but also the EPA, are not recommending that we switch to bottled water solely because we exceeded the health advisory threshold of 0.02. Thank you, Brandon. You're yes. welcome. Thank you. So we did send out an email um, with Brandon's letter also attached from Pound Up. <laughs> um, and so we reset it back out um, that the water is safe to drink. Um, we will be cooking with regular town water starting again tomorrow. But if students do come and feel more comfortable getting a bottle of water, we do have those still readily available for students. So always want to err on the side of caution, especially with our kids. So. Is there any thoughts on looking down the road, any kind of purification system? That can, is it only done by evaporation or what? How, how no, it's they take through the. You want to answer this one, Brad? 
Uh, you can take a stab at it, and then I can fill in the gaps after. So <laughs> we were talking a little bit about it, is a filtration system necessary, or is that something we need to do? They do some good. We do have some faucets here at the school that have a filter on them already. Um, but then again, it's, it's a leached chemical, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, not, so, I mean, it's in your body not, right now. Like, it's not It's not silt. No. It's, it's, it's not like strain. Exactly. Yeah. And so they did test today here at the school again, so we'll get results. So they tested right at the school. Um, but and it's possible that in the letter that they sent to us originally, they mentioned the filter system. But okay. we're not totally. I'm not a PFAS. How do you do, Brandon? Okay. How do you I, do? I just want to make sure I'm not asking about something that's just completely. He shy. actually did very well, but he's been sort of living this with me as well. Um, <laughs> you know, the CDC has stated that you know 97 percent of the U.S. population has PFAS in their blood right now. Yeah. Um, you know, it's found not just in water; um, it's found in the soil. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. it's it's everywhere. Yep. Um, and PFAS comes from products like candy wrappers, shampoo, water-resistant clothing, non-stick. <laughs> Any, anything that's purchased in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Dental floss, nail polish, cleaning products, paint, sailors, fire foam. Um, you know, the list just goes on and on. Yeah. So this is something that's happened over a long period of time. And, you know, it's going to take us a lot of work. I mean, the EPA is saying right now that, you know, they don't have all the answers, no. um, you know. So, if they, I mean, they have a lot of resources. So, if they don't have the answers, the Scotney Water District is not going to have all the answers. <laughs> Probably. <Nothing. laughs> and I'm not trying to pick fun at this, but we're going to do our part. In you know, we we're applying for a grant to pay for this water quality engineer, um, and his name's Craig Jewett. He's currently with Otter Creek Engineering, um, and he's been doing this a long time. And, you know, one of the ways that we can, or one of the things that we can look into is finding an alternate water source. So drilling a new well, drilling down deeper could potentially do it. Um, filtration systems, you know, the EPA, the filters that they have right now are really designed for people that, have levels of PFAS around like 65, 70 parts per trillion, not for the smaller amounts like we have. Yep. We don't know if a filtration system would actually be effective. Um, but we are looking into that as well. So fix is in development. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Since we're talking budgets and stuff like that, I assume the school paid for all this bottle of water that we ordered. Is that coming from food services? Is it's that coming from, from food services. Town? services no. that's SU. that's SU. SU, yeah. Yeah. and brian how much did you spend on bottled water just out of curiosity i'm, I'm not sure off the top of my head i can get that information i think four hundred dollars four hundred dollars yeah okay yeah i mean if you want to send that bill to the town we'll take care of it wow <laughs> i have to name too like in the future if it does happen and we have to run yeah. bottled water yeah. for a month or longer yeah. i yeah. think it's just interesting to thanks thanks Brian. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Well, if there's nothing else about water, that's the last thing I have on today's agenda. Um, is there any reason for executive session? No. no. Okay. Um, set the next agenda. Um, what's the date on it? It oh. is going to be on January 9th. January 9th. Yep. At 6.30? Yep. Here and online. Um, big topic will be the budget. Yes. Um, do you want to? Um, should we put curriculum on there again, just so we can talk about if there's been any? What the? I know. Maybe wait. Okay, we'll yeah. wait. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Might not have. Yeah, with the so you might not have time for a meeting before that. Okay, um, so mostly it's going to be the budget. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. I'm guessing they won't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um,
Take a motion to adjourn. Okay, Sarah made the motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. That's unanimous. All right. Stop recording.